All right, this video is made because uh, we're making this video because we painted this side of the van yesterday. This is the E series. We want to try to keep it going, keep it on the road, and we want it to look better than the other beat up ones on the road. So we fixed a couple of dings here and there with some with some body filler. Not too bad. Uh, we kind of beat the door straight where it got racked there. Um, there's some imperfections in the paint, but we did this outside on a sunny day, uh, kind of under the carport here. And we taped one side of the vehicle up and we did one side. This, was, this side was by far the worst. Now what we have here is basically a big refrigerator. This, this kind of was a pain in the butt to, to keep spray and paint, but that's like four coats of what they call single stage, I guess. It's a... Uh, and this is my first time painting with a paint gun so I think we used a 1.4 millimeter nozzle and we put uh, four coats um, they say when you paint you're supposed to spray uh, with a 50% overlap that means make passes one continuous pass and then over uh, overlap it by 50% that means come up and cover half again and then come down and then do the rest and then keep going back and forth and that's what we did and this is the best result we could come up with uh, playing with the nozzle settings and everything on the paint gun um, on the spray settings so we we did the best that we could and unfortunately we got you know kind of an orange peel um, too much to my liking but it does look better than most on the road that are beat up for this year um, it's a pretty older. It's, it's an older van. It's, it's 20 years old. Um, so you know, we just got some some wet sand dust on the tire. That's nothing. We'll wash that off, so it's not paint on the tires or anything. But we did a pretty good uh, coverage area. It's just the way that the orange peel came out. We don't care for. So we're gonna order some. We already got some 3M, uh, the 3M system, which is a a compound. Uh, a lighter compound and then a polish uh, it's like a three stage and then we got you know a buffing machine and all that and we're gonna wet sand all this down and then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna buff it in so hopefully that'll get rid of the orange peel and there's other videos on YouTube if you want to see and we've tried different methods to see if we could get rid of some of this orange peel but you know it didn't come out too bad and we did the hood uh, on another day uh, and we did not sand this down to the metal. This was painted over. So we used Omni uh, acrylic enamel with a hardener. And we used a high, gla high gloss hardener. And we mixed it eight one to one. So one part hardener, one part thinner, and then eight parts uh, paint. So that's that's what we mixed for this, and we used I think a 1.4 nozzle to spray this on. And so I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. That paint in a van is a pain in the ass, uh, but hopefully we get a better result when we buff it. Van with the PPG or Omni paint when PPG replaced it, single stage. Put about four coats on it. Right now, don't pay attention to the doors; they're gone. We're gonna get some new ones, but right now we're trying to do the body panels down the side. We're wet sanding with 1200 grit. <clears throat> we're doing it by hand on the biggest van on the planet. For those of you that don't know, it's this uh, textured look right here. This is orange peel. The best thing to compare the van to is a refrigerator. It's about what it looks like. <laughs> a big white fridge. Anyway, so. And that's what the paint came out like. I mean, I held the gun about four to five inches from the truck. I had my spray nozzle in a nice oval elongated pattern. And I made even passes all the way and then stopped and came back and went back and forth with a 50% overlap. Remember so some, yeah. Despite how many videos I've watched on how to do this professionally, uh, at least the paint went on even. Uh, I couldn't avoid the orange peel. Maybe it's because I didn't have enough air pressure in my compressor. Maybe it's because I had too much. Some people say it was because of air volume or something like that. Not coming out fast enough. All I know is I got the paint on there and now I need to fix it. 
So we're gonna rinse this down and we're just doing this one panel right here in this crease and right up here, sorry. I mean, there's a little orange peel, but I don't mind it staying up here. And then we're going to wipe this down. I'm gonna stick a, D, a, uh, a buffer on it and try to do the 3M three-stage kit or the, the compound, fine compound, and then the ultra fine, the compound. ultra fine, which is the one, two, three step. What do they call that kit? Call it uh, EX fine. I got it right here in the box. Yeah, but it's called a kit. I forgot what it's called. It's been out for years and years, and everybody loves it. But I haven't really used it. I haven't even really compounded a vehicle very much. I've only hand waxed the vehicle. So we're gonna find out how hard this thing is really to use and get right. I just wanted to show people they're intimidated by paint. I've been intimidated by painting my whole life of vehicles. And I've always did, was discouraged from buying a vehicle because of the paint job or the bodywork involved. And I've always known it's been time consuming, time consuming, tedious, and expensive. Uh, but most of all, time consuming. And I've always been afraid that maybe I would try to paint something and it would look like crap going on the road. And I'm sure some of, some of us have already tried to spray paint a vehicle with canned spray paint. But this is automotive paint, so this is a big deal to me. But I say, if you've never done something in your life, and you've always known in the back of your mind it's something you wanted to do. Oh shit, I mean you guys don't need to hear any intellectual stories from me. Just <laughs> try, if you're interested in painting your vehicle, try it. And so I'm going to get it dry and I'm going to get the sandpaper shit off of here. You can already see some of it's, uh, some of it's getting blurry. So I don't want to take all the orange peel away because factory is supposed to have some orange peel. I mean, you don't want to go, this is not a show quality paint job or vehicle or even the one stage paint that I use, which is clear coat and the, and the base mixed together. Uh, single stage, whatever they call it. So this is not by far any kind of show quality material. You can see some of it's still there. The Just orange little, peel, yeah, that's little pretty little. damn deep. And I'm gonna try to leave that alone and see what happens. It looks like a rusty barrel. Um, yeah, you can see the door here has Orange more. peel? Yeah, almost more. Yeah, it does, but. We didn't, we didn't mess with that. No, it's somebody else's deal. But what we're gonna do, let's try to bring this down so We'll come back when we start the buffing on this one top section here. And we'll compare this panel to the rest of the vehicle. 3M, uh, this is the first rubbing compound. Pretty coarse stuff, I guess. Uh, it's pretty damn expensive too. Um, but I bought it as a kit. And I don't know, it says to, to, to use it between 1200 and 2000 max RPM. Uh, this thing goes to 4,000, and its lowest is what? 1,500. 1,500, but it bogs down it on the pressure. It does bog down a lot. Uh, I've tried it a little tiny bit on the spot to see how if it would work, but this is an Amazon special right here. The 49 bucks, and you get these, these sticky pads that go with it. So the orange one is obviously equivalent to, well, I don't want to insult 3M, but it's equivalent to 3M's <laughs> uh, heavy pad. Uh, you've probably seen a million videos Dance. like this on YouTube, but uh, I don't know if you've seen it on a self-painted at home under the carport econoline with, uh, what did we have, 39% humidity? 39% humidity and it was about 70 degrees that day, sunny. Uh, 69, 65 degrees, something like that. Almost a picture perfect day for paint. I don't know about that. Where we are, it'd be nice to have no humidity or low humidity. There we go. Okay, so I'm kind of rubbing it in there. I'm just going to take a spot. I'm going to start on men. I won't even turn the wheel on men, but you know, I'm going to try two because that'd be about what, 2,000 RPMs? This thing goes to 4,000? Goes to 4,000. Max setting is five. Okay, two. Two is good. Yeah. I guess that's about two, three, I mean, uh, 1,500 balls down. Alright, we'll just 
keep going this back and forth, and then we'll add some more stuff. We'll try it again. But we'll just do it once and see what happens. Whatever you call that DA buffer polisher. And they say to wipe it off with a terry cloth or something, or some kind of fine wool cloth or lint free cloth or scratch free cloth, and I'm, I'm washing it off. I'm washing off the compound before it's actually dry. Because this is such a big surface. You can see our paint on the ground here. Call it clear coat? Yeah. And you can see we're, we're not worried about our extension cord electrifying us. Uh, we don't care. Um, <laughs> that's what a GFCI protector is for. If you do use household towels, don't use towels like get multiple towels do not contaminate one compound with another or one stage of compound with another by wiping it and then using the same towel um, because there's different grit in here this is obviously the coarse grit compound and the towel we used before to wipe it down was after we water sanded it so there's still possibly grit left over from the sandpaper so we don't want that to stick to it get stuck in the buffing wheel, spin around and cut a groove or a scratch or whatever on a, such a large surface. Now as you can see looking down the vehicle, there's some swirl marks where the water didn't wash off all of the compound. Uh, in this case, uh, we're going to wipe it off manually with a towel. Look, I'm going to wipe it off manually with a towel. So after this dries a little bit, not to contaminate our towel with with too much water we're going to wipe it down again when it dries and then um, and then we'll be able to start the second stage of uh, wax or I'm um, sorry compound um, which is supposed to reduce these swirl marks so it's just stages you know scratchy no a little less scratchy and then finally a finish that you could do on a black surface uh, on a black paint job because that's where obviously where the sun shows the most imperfections so we'll see after this stage how it comes out um, for the second we'll get to it in a second I just wanted to point it out that you you can't contaminate your wiping towel that you're using with the uh, with the other compounds all right, look down the side here. This is only the first first uh, stage of compound. Um, you can see that we've water sanded it. And it's the, the orange peel is down. But if you look up here, come up here and show on the side angle. You can see down the side angle, there's still significantly a lot of clear coat and orange peel mixture that doesn't quite sit right. If you were to look at this large surface on a daily basis, it just it's just too much. Now right up in this area was we'll sand it a little more because it's on a curve. It's a little bit better. Okay. And down here is almost optimal in this area. You can hardly see it. It's almost like a factory orange peel. You know, uh, that's pretty optimal right there. So you can tell that we got a lot of sanding left to go and from that point I'm gonna stick somebody else with a with more energy than me to sand this thing or we're gonna get our hands on a on a DA sander. The 3M 1200 grit swirl marks from the sandpaper or marks from the scratches from the sandpaper was taken down with that DA at 1200 grit. Now you didn't have to jump to 2000 and above. You could have stuck with 1200 on a white vehicle. Now it's to different people's likings. I'm not saying that's for everybody. I'm just saying for this big white refrigerator that belongs to me, this is acceptable. But I need to bring this down more so that there isn't these clear coat variations right here um, and that's only going to be done by taking more orange peel off and I can actually feel it in my fingertips so I got a pretty good mess of orange peel the good thing is I put yeah. four layers of paint on this thing so I can go down as deep as I well not as deep as I want but deeper than this to get this orange peel off all right so we've water sanding again what works better than one sanding block Two sanding blocks. Try to do an even straight across motion. You can go up and down if you want to. Just make sure your final pass is 
or in line with the body the way you would look down it. So you can kind of run over those scratches. Good, we put some new paper on here. It worked pretty good. And of course we had to break that, that smooth finished compound. But it wasn't too hard. A few passes and if I start cutting. Right. Can't see anything right now because it's wet. Okay. Now, I think I was close to my desired result for now. And if I'm not, well, this is just how it's going to stay. You guys are getting, guys and girls, will get an idea on whether or not you can paint your own vehicle. Or at least paint a fender or a body panel. And what happens if you screw it up? It's wet sand. And I did discover a run that I had. It was right, it was right over, did I sand the shit down? No, it was right up in that area, right there. Very hard for the camera to see, but the human eye can see it. Uh, that run has been sanded down, but there's dirt. Every, a very small discoloration in the paint where I was a smart ass and it stuck my finger in it to push it down after it started to self-dry to try to get the run down. Now what I heard from someone else is, let it run, and as it's starting to cure the paint, you take a razor blade and you, you a fine razor blade and you slice that run off. Then you go back and wet sand it down. Uh, and let the rest, and you shoot another quick coat over it, and you let that dry, and then you wet sand it. That's what I heard from another person. Who, Someone at a paint shop. Who does this for a living or whatever, or has in the past. Which I would never do this for a living. I'm sorry, my hat goes off to you guys out there that do do this for a living, because this looks like a pain in the ass, and it was so far. But not really when the reward pays off. Okay, this was 1200 Alright, so this is it after it was wiped off with the same dirty towel that we wiped the, the compound off with. I mean the uh, other sanding grit off with. Uh, just kind of used it to wipe it off so we could put some compound on it and see what we come out with. Other people are going to be like, oh, you can't do that. Well, I did. I uh, don't know if you can or you can't, but as the compound started to dry up, while I was putting it on with the DA, I mean the uh, polisher or whatever you want to call this thing. Uh, I call it an angle, it's an angle grinder. Uh, uh, Orange peel is very few. When I put it on there, uh, we use a spray bottle to keep it wet because it's such a large surface. I know they say stay in an area, finish it, then come on to another area. Well, I want this whole panel done. So I kind of cheated. Had somebody behind me spraying a mist here and a mist there with a spray bottle to kind of keep the solvent, the, the compound, loose, wet. So, yeah, let's see the troubled seven. area right here. We kind of cheated. I don't see anything over the troubled area. All right, well, stop, stop the video. Let's start compound. Let's finish it and let's let's give it an ending resolve because I'm sure people are tired of looking at this. All right, so which one we're we using now? Number two. Machine polish. Perfected. So. I'm sorry. Perfected kit. Um, this is what we're using. So this is one to two passes. And this is supposed to just remove the squirrel, the swirl marks. On a, what's comparable to their, their gray pad. So they say gray pad? It just means a softer foam pad, not as yeah. hard. Yeah. So for the generic pad we're using. Let's plug this thing up. Stand in the water right there and plug it in, please. Yeah. <laughs> right. I got to mess with the safety Nazis because they love attacking people and trolling YouTube channels. But you gotta be safe. That's what the GFCI outlet is for. I don't know if they've ever been shocked by 240 or 277. <laughs> Alright, so we're wiping it down after the second stage. Now, I don't know, there's a lot of orange peel missing here. It's pretty damn shiny on the corner here. The body's not perfectly straight. We filled a lot of dents and dings in here with body filler. It's really hard to see under different kind of lighting. What we got, you can still see some swirl marks. Yeah, but see. man, for a white paint job on a work van, step 
fact, I wouldn't call that half bad as opposed to this right here. This orange peel, look at this. Compared. Versus, yeah. Versus compared. Yeah, you can see that on the camera here. You can see, can the, you? Orange, you can see the orange peel. Yeah, I mean, you see it the kind ripple of effect. glossy, non-glossy, glossy, non-glossy orange peel. But I didn't even do this line yet. I just did from here, slightly down, all the way up to the top here. I want to do this as a test piece to see if we could actually compound this orange peel out. Now, we didn't get all the pits out in the orange peel right here in this section. We could stand the sand that again, but you know what? I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this. Tiny bit. Yeah, We've only been at, about bit. The, been, about, been at this for about, what, half an hour, hour? Yeah. I mean, taking the time to video and stuff. Now I got one more coat of polish to put on here, which is the fine scratch remover. I'm still debating whether I should use it. I mean, it's for black vehicles. Uh, but it's, it could be for this. I mean, I might put it on there. There you can see a difference in the camera here, how, how it's reflecting the post over there in the corner. You yeah. can see the bumpiness, then the stark smoothness. Right, so this side was beat up bad. I mean, it's dense everywhere. And what we did was we body filled this. Come over this way. We body filled it and we checked it under the different lighting and we put Sharpie circles and dents and how big the dents are. And it's really hard to do this unless you have the right light. So every place there's an X or a slit or a mark, there's places we need to check the body fill. And you got all that up there. Those are dots. That means paint's missing. So what we do is we feather the edge of that. It's not job is not to take all this off and sand it off to the metal because that's a lot of people want to do that to get a perfect job and they never finish their vehicles because it's a long task. So we're not doing that. In fact, I'd rather keep Ford's protective coating on there to come out with something like this and be okay with it with a single stage. And you know what? If I got to buff it every now and then, I got plenty of coats of paint on it to do it to get that kind of a mirror shine, even though a mirror shine reflects a lot of dents and stuff. I like the way it came out. I think I think we did a good job. It's a good pat on the back for you and for me. And I don't know. I would say you guys comment, let me know, but you know you're gonna get some asshole that's gonna be like, "Oh man, you got squirrel marks," and you know the reason you paint gonna. You know what? I don't mind advice. Uh, just as long as it's not, you know. The normal asshole stuff that's going around in the world today because we just you know we have enough of that shit going around um but anyway i just want to show you guys my adventures in painting this big ass van and this is just one side and the, and we painted the roof but we'll do the other side later we already painted the hood we got to compound that so we'll do all that and then we'll put the step rails on that sit up high and then we'll put the, the dual exhaust on coming out the side yeah, we're gonna use like a buffing foam pad. Now we are we put the uh, second stuff on. The third, I think. Right? Yeah, the third. Sorry. Now we need to let it dry a little bit. I still see some minor scratch marks here and there, but you know what? Like I said, it's not bad. kind of the finished product to my liking uh it's not waxed yet i mean whatever wax you want to put on it after that it's up to you um you know maybe that kit with the ending wax is compound is enough i don't know there's glazing there's all kinds of stuff you can put on there after uh or you can put a wax but it looks like a nice spot for a logo for the business name for the family business right here which fit right over this nicely. And then the rest of the vehicle, of course, compounded and the other side painting, painted. And then we just restored a 20 year old, or at least restored back to to acceptable working. Uh, There's your original orange peel right there. Yeah, acceptable working uh, professional look as much as we can get it on an old Econ. Yeah. Um, Compare at home, outside, outdoors, no real specialty products other than a paint gun kit. Uh, it costs about 95 bucks for the whole kit. What's, what's, the, what's the style of gun? Top feed? Top, it's HVLP, yeah. H, Top feed. HVLP. Gravity feed, that's the name. Gravity feed gun. Um, and they give you some other little 
little gun to do door jams and stuff with and and a good compressor it pumps up pretty good volume so we sprayed this whole sod with a pancake compressor uh a what kind a uh, porter cable a porter cable pancake like compressor. like a one gallon compressor <laughs> yeah it was ridiculous so we, we painted this whole side and i guess that's why we got this much orange peel because we didn't have enough pressure i don't know they recommend use a five horsepower motor with a big something like this old thing um we'll paint the other side next time with this thing with a dryer or two in line to keep the moisture out but um it kind of came out all right i mean i'm satisfied with it and uh now we can put a business logo in here and we could have a bunch of ambulance chasers uh people break checking us because we have a business and they think we have money um so we can have a bunch of assholes in the world you know break check us and uh get paid uh because we have a nicer looking vehicle so now we can get out in the world and suffer like the rest of you guys um with a nice business logo which reminds me the next next time we make a video or we will get to it eventually how to disable your anti-lock brakes so you can stop faster than the next asshole to trying to brake check you in front of you. Um, because there's no doubt disabling your anti-lock brakes will make you stop a hell of a lot faster than most vehicles do today with four-wheel anti-lock. Especially with this everything. Yeah, with 10,000 pounds or 9,900 pounds stopping instantly, abruptly. Yeah, I think I think we uh, could stop as fast as a, a, a what a, a, a Toyota uh, camera or or a uh, Toyota Corolla so yeah next time maybe we'll get to a video where we disable and bypass anti-lock brakes and uh, pitch that booster in the trash and get the uh, that that device in the trash and get the lines bypassed and uh, pull the you know get the computer not to uh, read a faulty signal and give a check engine for that anyway so this concludes the video um, the only thing I'm going to do next is pause the video, take it out into kind of the light, and then into the, the, uh, as the sun goes down, so you can see the difference in the sides. Okay. How does it look? Looks clean. Does it look better? Yes, it does. Got the orange peel? Yeah. I still see a little bit at the bottom here. Yeah, but it's nowhere near this. I mean, we're in the sunlight where it's not as. I mean, the, the, the sun, as the sun goes down, it's different. See, I guess that's where 2000 would have came in to get some of these scratches off of here. Yeah. But I still think it looks a hell of a lot better than we had. It does. Yeah, it looks better, a lot better than this refrigerator look. Um, back up. saying sue me. Alright, sue me ink. Yeah, we'll go to the next video.